Number 84, integrated concepts. One long straight wire is to be held directly above another by repulsion between the currents. The lower wire carries 100 amps and the wire 7.5 centimeters above it, it's a 10 gauge, right? This diameter copper wire, okay. Uh, letter A, what current must flow in the upper wire neglecting Earth's field? All right, so we got two wires here, boom, 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 right? And the lower wire they say is carrying 100 amps in the wire, uh, okay, they tell us the distance, right? 7.5 centimeters above, but you know we need that a meter, so 0 0.075 meters above. Um, the 10 gauge, okay, copper wire. They're also telling us that this wire is copper on the top. So that's probably important in terms of the density, all right? So density of copper is about 8.8 .8 times 10 to the, it's about 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third uh, kilograms per cubic meter. All right. What current must flow in the top wire? So we're trying to figure out the current here, right, in the top wire. Um, yeah, in order for this basically top wire to levitate, in other words, okay? So uh, let me use this formula over here that the force that this wire is experiencing due to the magnetic field being produced by the lower wire will be equal to the current flowing through that wire. So let's call this above, okay? And uh, multiplied by its length, and then multiplied by the magnetic field that this wire is experiencing. But the wire here at the top is experiencing a magnetic field produced by the bottom wire, right? We have done problems like this in the chapter. Multiplied then by the sine of the angle, we'll assume that it's 90 degrees, and it will be because they're parallel, and we've talked about that already. So this formula works out to be uh, to look something like this, all right? That the uh, magnetic field force, basically, all right? Or the magnetic force here acting on the wire. Now we know that the in order for this upper wire to levitate, we know that the magnetic force here acting on that wire, Fa, must equal then the weight, right? The weight of that wire. Now the weight of the wire is simply the mass of that wire, right, multiplied by gravity. So I'm going to do little substitutions now, right? Ia, La, divided by B sub B. Now here's the thing, right? What are they asking us to calculate? They're asking us to calculate the current, okay, flowing in that wire. So what I need to do then is divide out these terms, boom, just like that, okay? So now I'm gonna ask myself, do I know what I need to know in order to calculate? Do I know the mass? Uh, no, they didn't tell me anything about mass. So I know that that means the mass has to cancel somehow. Uh, do I know the length of the wire? Mm, no, right? I don't know the length of A, okay? And then do I know the magnetic field B is producing? Well, not at the moment, okay? So first thing is, can we find the magnetic field that uh, wire B here is producing 0 0.075 meters above? Well, surely we can, right? Surely we can. We can use this formula on over here on the right-hand side. We've seen that plenty of times now, right? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute this on in for that, okay? So the current in wire A is equal to the mass of A times gravity divided by the length of A, multiplied now by the um, permittivity or uh, permeability of free space. I realize I'm going to be running out of a little room here, but permeability of free space, multiplied by then the current traveling in wire B, divided by then 2 pi times the distance between them. Okay, so I know the distance. I know the current flowing in IB, so I know those. Two pi, that's a constant, that's a constant. Gravity is a constant. Oh, I'm so close, right? Mass and length. Not exactly, uh, I don't know that yet, right? So, um, what happened here? Okay. So now what I need to do is probably get rid of, I got to somehow think about how is mass and length related. And that's probably through the density. So remember, density, density is equal to mass divided by volume. Now we're talking about a wire. And what that means is that the wire is a cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is two pi, not two pi, sorry, pi r squared times the length. Wait a minute. Wait, hold on one second. If I just move this m over here, you're telling me there's the mass per length. Wait a minute, is that the same? Yes, right? Because here I'm talking about wire A, A. So what I realize now is I just have to do a little cross multiplication. In other words, that the mass of, uh, mass per length of wire A is equal to the is equal to pi times the radius of that wire A multiplied by the density. 
Now they told us the diameter, huh? So we can finally find the radius, right? So now what I realize that we can do is we can now take this IA and instead of the mass uh, per length there, I'm now going to plug this in, okay? So it's pi RA squared times the density of A, right? These are all A and A, uh, times then G, okay? Times then G is all then divided now by permittivity, permeability free space, I sub B, all divided by then two pi R, right? And this is now, uh, okay, this is now the R value, yep, of the, okay. So I'll, I'll, we will assume, by the way, that they are, that they are the same, um, that they have the same radius. Uh, excuse me, this is the distance. This is not the radius. Whoa, just got confused there. I hate when they use R here. It's D. I'm going to use D because for distance between them, okay? So we have everything we now need. So now all we're going to do is start plugging it in. So I'm going to do it on the upper left-hand corner. So this is pi multiplied by the radius. So here they told us the diameter, but you know we need that in, first of all, we need that in meters. <laughs> and then we're going to need that in divide to divide it by 2, right? So that's 2.588 times 10 to the minus 3. Divide that then by 2. Don't forget to square it. Multiply it by the density of 8.8 .8 times 10 to the third. Isn't this problem fun? Times gravity, 9.8. Now all divided by the permeability of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus seventh times the current flowing in wire B, basically, which is 100 amps. And then uh, divide that then by 2 pi. You know, we can do some simplifications if we need but then multiply that by the uh, distance between them, which was 0 0.075. Okay, I hope, hopefully that calculation looks fun. All right, so let's be careful. So we got 2.588 times 10 to the minus three, divide that by two, square it. Multiply that then by pi. Okay, then multiply that by 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus, uh, times 10 to the third, times then 9.8. So the whole numerator there is about 0.454-ish. Now divide that by the entire denominator now, okay? And I think what I'm going to do, just to simplify my life a little bit here, let's cancel this, let's cancel this, and just make that a 2, okay? So 2 times 10 to the minus 7th, multiplied by 100, divided then by 0 0.075. Close those parentheses. And we get a value here of approximately now, 1,700-ish amps, okay? That's the current that has to flow in the top wire in order for it to levitate. So letter B, what is the smallest current if Earth's three times 10 to the minus fifth Tesla field is parallel to the ground and is not neglected? All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna use, work for, at it from this formula here, all right? And uh, I, I have to assume that they're pointing basically in the same direction that they're going to be additive. Uh, so in other words, that the current here for wire A is going to be equal to mass of A times gravity divided by then the length of A uh, multiplied then by the, the total magnetic field. Now the total magnetic field here will be the summation between the magnetic field being produced by the wire below plus then Earth's magnetic field, okay, of the Earth. So uh, what we now need to do is I'm going to do these calculations, I guess, separately. I don't know, because the formula is going to become a mess. So we already talked about what the magnetic field produced by B should be. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to just calculate that. All right, so the magnetic field, the magnetic field produced by B is going to be equal to the permeability of free space, which is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th times then the current flowing in that wire, which was 100 divided by then. 2 pi times and the distance between those two wires 0.75, right? So that cancels, that cancels, we're left with the 2. And let's just calculate this. So the magnetic field here is going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 7 times 100 divided by 0 0.075. So this is going to be 2.67 times 10 to the minus 4th, but that's just the magnetic field produced by B. We also have to add now to that the magnetic field produced by the Earth. So add to this the magnetic field produced by the Earth, which was 3 times 10 to the minus 5th, 
<clears throat> and lo and behold, so add to that 3 times 10 to the minus 5th. And lo and behold, we should now get a value of about the total is going to be 2.97 times 10 to the minus 4th. All right, that's the total field. So this is now what's going to get plugged in for this whole thing. Okay, now uh, we already talked about the mass per length. Okay, we already talked about the mass per length. So if we go on over to this now formula here, all right, this was the whole magnetic field portion on the, well, I might have canceled some stuff actually. So let me just, let me just scroll back. So but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this term here and I'm going to plug it in for my mass per length. Okay. So the current in A will be equal to now pi R A squared times the density of A times G all then divided by now the 2.97 times 10 to the minus fourth. Plug in your radius, we already found that up here, okay? Plug in your uh, density, it, it's just basically this whole, this whole numerator now I'm gonna plug in, okay? That whole numerator portion up there. So it's gonna be pi, I already have it written out, so it's pi times, uh, well, let's do in parentheses. So 2.588 times 10 to the minus three, divide that by two and square it. Then multiply that by pi. Then multiply that by 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus, uh, times 10 to the third. Then multiply that by 9.8 or 9.81. And then divide that now value by 2.97 times 10 to the minus fourth. And now the current here should be a little less, right? 1,530 or so. All right, amps. So it's a little less. Letter C. Is the supported wire in a stable or unstable equilibrium if displaced vertically? Or displaced horizontally. So um, as it's displaced vertically, right, what happens now is that the uh, the magnetic field, okay, being produced by B becomes less and less. But the weight of this wire is staying constant. So what happens is that as the wire moves up, the magnetic field, or excuse me, the magnetic force of wire B re gets reduced. So it's actually going to pull itself back down and it's actually gonna to come to a nice stable equilibrium here, okay? But if we move it horizontally like this, right, the force is now not evenly balanced, then what's going to happen is that you're gonna to start to get some kind of rotation going on here with this wire like this. It's gonna to start to kind of rotate a little bit because the forces are not balanced over the entire length. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Take care.